What's going on? Tyler Austin here, founder and CEO of REI Sift. And one of the things that we get pretty often is what is wholesaling? So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you an example of what wholesaling is, but more importantly, debunk the difference between wholesaling and a signing of contracts. So before we explain the signing of contracts, I want to explain what wholesaling is. Wholesaling is just the ability to get something at volume and sell it at a discount. Okay, so if you're an acquisitions company in real estate, you're performing wholesaling through your marketing efforts. And then when you buy it from yourself, you're not really wholesaling. You've just bought a wholesale price property. You're actually just dispositioning it to yourself. No different than if I were to assign it to somebody else, I didn't just wholesale it to them. What I did is I assigned a contract to them, okay? Because I was the end buyer originally, all right? So let's just make sure we understand that concept that wholesaling is not a signing and vice versa. The art of wholesaling, if you say you're a wholesaling company, that is simply just you saying that, hey, I get properties at volume. If you are a flipper and you find two properties a year and you flip them, are you a wholesaler? No, you're probably not. But if you were to maybe assign eight other to them, could you call yourself a wholesaler? Yeah, probably. Okay, um, it's interchangeable in the industry. Just know and just understand <laughs> there's a difference between wholesaling and assigning a contract. Okay, cool. So let's give an example. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna grab this bottle of wine, okay? This is a $250 bottle of wine. So if I were to have and be in the wine industry, for example, which I'm not, um, but if I was and I knew that there was, I had a list of individuals that I could call and say, hey, I know that you have luxury bottles of wine. I would love to purchase them uh, you know, from you for cash, which could be a real thing now that I think about it. But let's just say I have this $250 bottle of wine. You know it's $250. Uh, and I'm gonna walk over next door and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to somebody and they're gonna be essentially the seller, okay? We're gonna represent it. Right now, I don't own this bottle of wine. Uh, right now, we're gonna use Jake. We're doing some pizza. Jake owns this bottle of wine, okay? It's $250, Jake owns it. I called Jake or whatever, we met up in person and I asked Jake, hey man, would you love to sell that bottle of wine? Yeah, sure. Okay, can I give you $75 cash? Yeah, sure. $75 cash, all right, so I just got it from cash. Okay. He would never take that deal, was, but, that was, was, but, <laughs> but that, was really, that was a really easy deal. All right, so I now bought this for $75, or at least we did an agreement that I can buy this for $75. And now I see Zach over here is eyeing this bottle of wine. He's like, hey man, I really love wine. Um, I don't know that he does, but all right. He said, hey man, I would love that bottle of wine. It's a nice bottle of wine. Yeah, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, cool, yeah man, I will sell you this agreement to purchase this wine from this gentleman for $150. I could probably sell this for $250, so that's a deal, I'll take it. Yeah, because it's worth $250. I bought it for 75, or at least I got an agreement for $75, right, to buy this. And now I'm selling it to him for 150 and he still has room to make a deal happen, right? So he can still make $100 off of it. I've made $75 off of it. Uh, and uh, so everybody wins, right? Did I just wholesale if I did that one time? Absolutely not. What I did is I found a bottle of wine I wanted to buy, and then I assigned it, my agreement to buy it with another gentleman for a profit, and now they're gonna be the ones to do a transaction together, okay? However, I'm still gonna make sure the deal goes to closing because if I don't, well, I might not get my initial you know, in investment back, right? Or I might not make my, my the difference. So um, if I was to do this at volume, however, if I was to go out and, and call a bunch of sellers that own you know, bottles of luxury wine, and I were to make them offers for cash, and then I were to find other buyers who would be interested in it, right? Would that be a signing or would that be considered wholesaling? Probably because you're doing it at volume. But I could be doing it for myself and just, I could just love wine and I could just buy it directly and then I could drink it, right? Just like flippers can find their own deals, buy them themselves and then flip them. Are they considered wholesalers? Absolutely not because wholesaling is the art of just finding acquisitions and then people consider the, the assigning of those deals to somebody as the wholesaling component component in, in real estate, but it's not really true. You have wholesaling, which is finding and doing something at volume at discount, and then you have a signing of contracts, which is a disposition strategy, no different than if you were just flip the property yourself. You could list the property, um, 
What does that look like? Because people call themselves wholesalers, but then they go and they list properties. Are they considered a wholesaling company if they're listing properties? I don't, just remove the noise and understand there's a difference between these terminologies. If you're wanting to do wholesaling in the real estate space where they consider it, that's assigning contracts, okay? So you gotta have an assignment contract, you gotta have initial purchase and sales agreement, and, and that's it. All right, so obviously the most important part of that whole you know, situation is actually being able to find the people that own the bottle of wine, right? <laughs> Uh, but for most real estate people, right, it's houses. So what we do here at REI ISIF is we actually help you find and we organize the process and educate the process of actually finding the houses that are in positions and maybe in distress or homeowners that, that need to sell their property uh, and then manage, help you find them and then manage those leads until it converts to revenue in your business. So we turn more prospects to leads and more leads to revenue. So if you're interested in learning more about how to do that, the first thing that I would recommend is our auto lead gen challenge. The link will be in the description below or autoleadgenchallenge.com. And we literally go from the beginning of starting a business to marketing to individuals and producing leads. So if you're looking to, to heighten your lead generation, spend less money, increase net profits, maybe you should give it a try.